Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevTactic, back with a second part to, uh, of a tutorial that we actually had in the last year about media files with Ionic. So in the previous tutorial, we uh, were able to capture images, videos, audio, and store them on the device as a file. And you asked for a tutorial on how to upload these files to Firebase, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So. In order to follow this tutorial, you might want to check out the previous one called the Ionic 4 Media Guide. Um, you can also insert your email here to get your template and then you can basically follow along with the code of this tutorial or otherwise just basically check it out how I do it and then transfer it to your project. What you need of course as well uh, is a Firebase application, so I already got one, uh, name doesn't really matter. I hope you already know how to create one. Uh, we will take the next steps together. So in order to update our project and use Firebase, we of course have to install the Firebase SDK and I will also use Angular Fire just because I like Angular Fire. Besides that, I will uh, create a new page or I created it already. Um, to display all the files that we uploaded and just for the sake of using the URL of a file we will also add the in-app browser plugin. Alright, let's remove all of this and continue with the integration. In order to um, initialize Firebase we have to add the uh, credentials and normally if you have an empty project you have to add an application. I already added a web app, the name again doesn't really matter, but what's important is this little snippet. So let's copy it out and let's move to our environment and there we go. Of course we have to change the syntax a bit, but then we got it perfectly fine in our environment and now we can continue with the app module in which we have to import a few things. So let me directly bring them in. Uh, we need the Angular Fire module, which is like the base module that you always have to uh, import when you're using uh, Angular Fire and you have to call, I think, initialize app. And now you pass in the options, which we have nicely stored in our environment. So there we go, really nice. Um, we're not using the uh, the real-time database or the Angular Fire Store, but the Fire Storage. So go ahead and add the Fire Storage module um, to the imports as well, and the in-app browser that we're going to use later to the array of our provider. So let's close the app, the environment. The app routing at this point should look somehow like this. We just need the second page where we can navigate to, and then finally time to enter our home page. Um, the browser preview of this application is rather limited because we're using uh, a bunch of Cordova stuff so it's not really working very nicely but after the first step we will take a look at the code on a device. Final step for preparation. Move back into Firebase, go to your storage and if you're just trying things out you might want to set the rules to allow upload and read and write to basically everyone because i don't want it to implement uh, user authentication in this tutorial as well which i actually do currently for a new course inside the ionic academy so there will be an extended course around this topic in january as far as i think or know um, but for now, we will keep it to these simple rules. So make sure you also got the rules version 2, which is important for listing files later and also allowing read and write access. All right, now we can hopefully um, close my bar, which we don't really need, and also work with our page. We already can... Um, use media files. So we got the select media files from before. We can uh, pick images, capture image, record audio, and all of these files will be copied to our local application. So they're inside the folder of the application, which means if we want to upload them, we just uh, need to use the URL that we already got. So let's implement upload file and use the file entry like before and perhaps we will also already integrate this in our little view by adding 
two hour ion item sliding one item to the end to upload a file. We can also uh, add a little progress bar. So let's add this at the top. Um, is this how you spell success? I will just use something else. And then we also need an upload progress variable, which I will add to the top and set this one to null in the beginning. Um, to upload files, we of course need access to the storage. And this one comes from Angular Fire Storage. Make sure you're not picking the module in here. That's not what we want. And then later we will also use the toast controller to display a little toast. All right, that's all for the changes up here. Now let's go back to our upload file function. In order to upload the file, uh, we need to put either a string or a blob to Firebase and currently we have a file. So we need to resolve the file to a blob, which is uh, actually not that hard uh, as I found out. So first of all, we can copy this little snippet to get the path to the file and then we can use or create a new buffer and use our uh, file plugin, which actually has a function to read in a file as an array buffer. So we're gonna have to supply the path and we have to supply the name of the file, which happens to be f.name because the file entry already contains a lot of information. Now this one will actually return a promise. Uh, you don't see an error yet, but we would if we would use buffer now, which is now a promise. So in order to make this as easy as possible, let's just mark the function as async and type await, which will then change the type directly to array buffer. So this line is an async call. It's a bit disguised, but it makes the code a bit more readable today. So then we got our file blob, which is initialized as a new blob. You put in the buffer uh, in an array and then you also need the MIME type. So normally you could do something like type image JPEG. And the problem is we have audio files, we have video files, um, we got everything. So we need a way to find out the MIME type and I just created this very simple function uh, based on the file extension. We will return either audio, image or video. Um, if you have more types in your application, you could use this as the base and then just add a few more options. I know I think there are quite a few options, so maybe there's also already a snippet somewhere online. And then we can simply get the type by calling this.getMime type and the file extension can be passed by using f.name, which is like um, my image.jpg. And if we split this at the dot, <laughs> we would have an uh, array of my image uh, and um, JPEG. And as we wanna have this, we can simply call pop on the array and this will give us the last path, which is then passed to the function. So I hope you understand this function. Uh, we could type this as well in a different way, but this is just the shortest form I came up with to get the extension. Now, with all of this in place, we can finally uh, use Firebase storage, or actually uh, we might wanna do something else as well, um, because if you wanna upload the file, you should give it a unique name and you can either create a random ID uh, using the date or I just found this nice snippet online which generates a random number or a string of numbers. I'm not 100% sure about this path, but the good thing about snippets is this just works. So we got six characters of random ID, random, and then we can create an upload task. This is uh, what we get back from storage. So here we're using Angular Fire Storage now the first time. And you see we got either the reference, uh, we can directly access the storage or we can call upload. In other tutorials, you might see something like 
uh, using the storage and then calling put or is this actually called directly on storage or maybe it's even uh, deprecated but upload is simply the short form of something that was in the past put and we want to upload to a specific path inside the Firebase storage, which we will call, uh, let me copy this before I make any typo. So files, and then again, using the date and the uh, uh, score, and then our random ID. So in the end, this will be inside the Firebase storage in files, uh, whatever the date is, underscore, and then a random ID. So that's basically how it will look like in a storage. And of course, the second argument for the upload function is the data, which happens to be our file blob that we prepared nicely up front. Um, did we use the type anywhere? I think we should use it in here. That was the whole idea. Now, if you hover over this, you will see we got an Angular Fire upload task. And this one is pretty interesting because uh, we can resume, we can pause, we can catch errors, um, and we can also listen to percentage changes. And this is an observable. And then we can easily set our upload progress directly to changes, which is uh, a value between one and a hundred. So this is perfectly fine for the uh, ion progress bar that we have up here. You could have some additional logic to only have one upload or have an up, uh, array of upload progresses, but I just wanted to keep things a bit simple in this one just to show how we can upload files. So at some point the upload task will be finished and then um, we gonna display our toast. That's not super interesting. So trust me that this will display toast Again, using async and await as this will return a promise. All right, we've added this to our homepage. We can now swipe it. This will call upload file. Upload file will get all the path, will create a buffer by reading it, uh, will get the MIME type using our custom function and then generate a blob using the type and the buffer and finally upload everything. So. Let's see how this looks on a device. All right, here's the app. Um, just like before, we got all the options. So let me try to open or load a few images. Actually, this is only selecting one. Great plugin, uh, working very good. Uh, let's try to also record some audio. Hello, is this working? I have no idea if this is actually really working. Uh, now we got the three files and we can swipe here to upload our file. You can also see that at the top the progress bar comes up and also our toast notification. Let's also use maybe the sound because that might be a bit bigger. No, it isn't really. But we see file upload finished and also the bar is finished. So let's go to our storage and check if this is actually the reality. And there we got it. The files folder is created and we got two files. The first one having the type image JPEG. The second one having the type audio web. I don't know if I can play this. Hello, is this working? Yeah, I, I hope you were able to hear this. It is actually working. So this was part number one. As you can see, we just needed a few lines. Uh, the complex part was creating the file block to upload it, but once you get this in place, it is really easy to upload the file. Now, as a second part, it could be interesting to list all the files in the storage, and that's what we're gonna do with our cloud list. So uh, let's add a button to our homepage to actually move to the cloud list. Uh, I already got this one at the top, that is good. Good news. So let's open the cloud list, perhaps not the testing file today, but the TypeScript file. What we want to do is we want to get a list of files from Firebase storage. The problem is that within Angular Fire, I couldn't find an option to do this, although it is uh, already possible with the JavaScript SDK. So at the time of writing this, perhaps this could also change. Uh, Angular Fire versions are also changing, um, well, 
kind of often uh, enough to uh, deprecate most of my videos after just a few weeks. So we can call a load files function in our cloud list page. And in here, uh, we could first of all have uh, array, let's call this cloud files and make it empty in the beginning. And because we might call this at a later point as well, we're gonna do it in here as well. And now we grab a reference to the Firebase storage. So you're used to this from the um, database already normally. And now we're using the Firebase we edit from the di a package directly and grab the storage. And from here, a reference to our files folder. So that is our reference to the storage, first of all. And now we can use this one to call list all. List all items, files, and prefixes under this storage reference. So this is something that I couldn't find in the Angular Fire uh, package yet, but perhaps in the future, or I'm pretty sure uh, at a later point, we will also see this in Angular Fire. So this result uh, is now a list result. And if you check it out, it has items, next page token, prefixes, which means we have to iterate this array before we can actually use it. So each of the entries is one reference to a file. And if we want to use it, uh, we might want to have a bit more information. So what we can do is, for example, push a new object that only contains the values that we want to have from the reference. For example, the name could be found at reference name. We could get the full path at reference full path. Uh, we could perhaps pass the reference itself to the object and also the URL to the file, which is the interesting part because for this, we would have to use get download URL. And the problem is that this will return a promise once again, but I think I'm not 100% sure if this works. Uh, but we can await the result of this as well in here. So uh, in order to test the URL, I'll also uh, perhaps lock this. Um, well, for now, let's add the private, sorry about that, um, the private in-app browser, and then uh, bring in two additional functionalities too. Open the external URL. Where is my in-app browser? Uh, sorry. I'm pretty sure it exists on the in-app browser. I think the import is actually not yet ready. There we go from in-app browser ngx. And then we can open an external URL and also lock this so we can try it in our real browser and also delete a file which can be uh, done using the reference. So this is really just an example of how you could use the references. And the important part is the list all right here. So now we just need to display them and I will just bring it in because that's kind of boring. So we got the cloud files. We will iterate over all the cloud files. We have a button to open the external URL. We display some information and we got delete file. So. With all of these things now in place, let's once again check it out on a device. All right, back in our app, we already know that we captured these three files. We uploaded two of them to Firebase storage and let's see, it loads a second and then we see both of our files. And now if I click on open link, it will actually open Firebase directly here. And we can also, oh, come on. Can we, can I please get the whole, oh man would be cool to get the full URL. One more try and then I will do it in a different way. Perhaps I can copy from here to um, Safari. Yes, it looks like. So we have this URL that I could now also open directly here in the browser and then we get the media file. Hello, is this working? And I can confirm the media file is working. So we're able to upload the files to Firebase storage. We could now even get rid of them, uh, which would delete them from our storage bucket. And as you can see, as we triggered the reload, 
it is also not appearing in the list anymore so there's only one file left so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on uploading files to Firebase storage. The important part is really um, transforming the local file you've stored on the device to a blob and then uploading it to Firebase. That's basically all you have to do with our media files. Again, if you want to get the first part, check it out, the Ionic 4 media files guide. And if you got any questions to this topic, of course, leave them below. As I said, I'm already working on a new Firebase course for the Academy, so if you're not yet a member and interested in the topic, definitely make sure to check out the ionicacademy.com. I hope you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos and I will catch you next time, so have a great day and take care. <laughs>